cool. Fidget spinners. How many, how many viewers did I just lose right there? <laughs> a lot of people are pretty tired of this whole fidget spinner craze just because it's everywhere. That's kind of why I've refrained from making another fidget spinner video just because there's already so much fidget content out there. And that's why I kind of figured I would lay back, do my own thing, and let, let the fidgeting happen. But... Yeah. Fidget spinners still seem to be the most requested item in the comments of my videos, so who am I to deny my fans? That's why today I'm going to show you a whopping four different methods for creating four unique fidget spinners. I'll start off by using a 3D pen to create a fidget spinner. That might seem like it wouldn't work very well, but I do have a secret weapon. Then I'm going to go ahead and model another spinner in Tinkercad, which is a super simple bare bones software that anyone can use. After that, I'll move on to Fusion 360, which is more powerful, and I'll also make a fourth spinner in SolidWorks. It's a lot to get through, so let's jump right into it and see what we can do. All right, so our first spinner is gonna be made with the 3 Doodler Pro and my secret weapon, the 3D Mate, which is this really cool silicone mat that helps create more precise pen drawings. This is a prototype for an upcoming Kickstarter campaign, and I'll be sure to link to the description once that's up. Of course, we need our bearings as well. And I'm also gonna use some 3 Doodler ABS, as well as this bronze material, which is really gonna help this thing spin because compared to regular ABS, it's a lot heavier. But we're gonna start off with the ABS for the center bearing. So I'm gonna load up some yellow, and we'll use this circle template to get a nice perfect circle. This second ring happens to be just perfect for the bearings, just a little bit larger than the bearing itself. Once I've got that first circle, I'll put the bearing in place and then start drawing around it and encapsulating the entire thing within the ABS material. I'll use the even smaller ring to create a little cap to help hold the spinner. As you can see, it creates this cute little wheel pattern. All right, how about we swap colors and do the other side? But while the material is purging, I'm actually gonna fill the center of this bearing to hold everything in place. So we've got that nice solid core, and now we'll go ahead and transition to the red filament and basically do the same thing for the other side. The circle template creates eight points, which I use to weld the part together, and that'll hold the red onto the yellow. And then I'll create a hot bead of plastic right in the middle and drop the other end of the cap on there. So the bearing is already pretty much held in place. I'll add a few extra beads here and there just to make sure everything is really secure. Now I'll go ahead and swap out for that bronze filament for those outer bearings. And I'm pretty much doing the same thing, completely surrounding them in filament. And then I'll create this kind of spoke pattern to really hold it in place. Cool, so I'll do that two more times for the other three bearings. And once I've got those, I'm gonna swap out to the yellow again, just for some accent colors. So I'll create another kind of wheel slash starburst pattern here. And then we basically have all our bearings encapsulated in plastic. I'll do my best to position those outer bearings evenly around the center one. And then I'll use a hot bead of black ABS to fuse them together. And I'll do the same on the other side as well so that we have a nice, secure connection. Then I'll go around and get a lot more of that black ABS all around the bearings, because we need this connection to be pretty strong. I'll do some little extra decorations with the black, which looks cool, but it also helps stick everything together. So the thing spins now, but despite trying to be really accurate, it's still pretty off-center, creating quite a wobble. But not to worry, there is a way to fix this. So first off, I'm gonna hold it vertically and that'll help me kind of figure out which bearing is the heaviest, that one that's sinking to the bottom. So to balance it out, I'm gonna use some more of that bronze filament and add it to the two lighter bearings. And as long as one bearing keeps swinging to the bottom, I'm gonna keep adding weight to the other two. 
Just go little by little, constantly testing until you have a really nice spin. There we go. All right, so that's pretty much it as far as getting a functioning spinner. Now I'm just gonna do a few more cosmetic additions, making sure to apply everything as evenly as possible so I don't throw off that balance I just created. All right, and there we go, just like that, we've got a pretty successful fidget spinner created with nothing but four bearings and a 3D pen. That bronze filament really is quite heavy, so this thing spins for quite a while, especially with that pricey ceramic bearing I used in the middle. Boom, fidget spinner number one. For spinner two, we're gonna be using Tinkercad here. As you can see, we've got a work plane here, as well as this list of primitive shapes that you can drag onto that workspace and basically build just as if you're playing with some building blocks. So we're gonna start with this tube to create the ring that goes around our bearing. I'll increase the number of sides to the maximum value just so that this thing is nice and round. And then I'm gonna make the outer diameter of this 26.5 millimeters in each direction. And the reason I chose that number is because I want the inner diameter to be 22.5 millimeters. The bearing is 22 millimeters and then I want a little bit of tolerance. So I make the outer ones 26.5 and then I change the wall thickness to two, giving me the correct inner diameter for this tube. Of course, we also need to adjust the height to match the bearing, so I'm gonna click right there and change that dimension to seven millimeters. So there we go, we've got our center ring, and now I just need to create some arms to connect to the outer bearings. So I'll use this round roof. It's a nice playful shape, and it's got a flat bottom so that we don't have to use any support material when we're printing this. I'll just grab these handles and scale everything by eye. It is set to snap to one millimeter increments, so that helps you keep from going too crazy. But I'll just go ahead and adjust this all manually until it looks like a good distance. The longer these arms are, the more inertia and therefore the longer spin our fidget spinner will have. But we also don't want it to be too long, otherwise it'll be uncomfortable to hold. So I'll just adjust that, and I actually want to have two of these arms per bearing, just to create an interesting and more unique style. So I'll make this pretty thin, and then I'm gonna duplicate it and drag one over to the side and try to create a symmetric design. I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move things by one millimeter increments. All right, next up, I'm gonna duplicate this center bearing holder because we're using bearings for the outside as well, so we want the same shape. So I'll bring that out there, and then I'm gonna select both of these arms by holding shift, and then I can scale that so it doesn't overlap with the holes. We're gonna want three of these outer arms, so I'm gonna go ahead and select both the arms as well as that outer bearing holder, and then convert that into a group. Now I can select that whole group and duplicate it and copy that around my spinner. I'll click this little rotation handle and set it to 120 degrees. I'll bring that over here and then I'm gonna duplicate that and rotate it by another 120 degrees. So now we can have three evenly spaced arms. Now Tinkercad does have functions for automatically aligning shapes, but as far as I could tell, this only works for lining things up along the X and Y axes. So to make sure that all these arms have perfect radial symmetry, I'm actually just gonna set a ruler here and sort of eyeball it. I'll make sure that my center bearing is lined up at the center of this ruler that I put down. And then I'll go to this angle where I can see that there's pretty much a tiny little two by two millimeter box at the center of these arms. So now all I have to do is select the entire spinner and rotate it 120 degrees again, which kind of throws it off, but then I'll line it up again to the center of that ruler. And then I'll go back and look at that little square between the arms and make sure it creates that same two by two square. I'll do the same thing one more time, rotating the whole model 120 degrees and then centering it and lining up that top arm to have that little square. All right, let's make sure to inspect this thing before we actually save it out. And I actually noticed that the arms aren't entirely overlapping with the center bearing holder. There's a little bit of an edge there. So what I've got to do is select everything and ungroup it. And then I'm going to select those arms and stretch them out just a bit until they actually overlap properly. Then once again, I'll go ahead and rotate the model 120 degrees and do that for each of the arms. I've got to do that rotation, so that way the arms that I'm scaling are lined up with the XYZ grid. Otherwise the scaling box is weird and doesn't really let me scale things correctly. 
So in a way, the simplicity of Tinkercad can help, but it can also make things a little more tricky. And you kind of have to find workarounds to do certain things your way. Anyways, now that I've got those arms fixed, I'll select everything and group it so that it's one single part. And then I can go over here to export and I'll select STL. Full disclosure, this is actually my first model that I've ever created in the software. So that's why I'm not doing anything too crazy. But hey, it's a fidget spinner and I kind of like the simple playful feel it has to it. By the way, I should mention that my mini factory teamed up with Tinkercad for this design competition that just started. You can design a fidget spinner or these other themes. And if they pick your design, you could win this $2,000 printer or these other really cool prizes. So if you've been thinking about getting into design and 3D printing, this is definitely a competition that you should consider. All right, so back to my spinner. Here I've got it printing out on this Da Vinci Mix Junior that I'm reviewing at the moment. And I used this printer because it's got this really cool blend feature so that I can have this nice gradient between yellow and red. It looks pretty cool. Unfortunately, when I printed this out, the holes for the bearings were way too small. And sure enough, when I checked with my calipers, we were about two millimeters short. So it must've been something funky with the settings of that printer or the slicer that they use. So I went back, scaled the thing up to 108% and the bearings fit, but a little bit too loose. So I gave it one more shot, scaling the original model to 105% and then the bearings fit really nice and snug. The balance on this spinner is pretty much perfect meaning that I did line things up correctly in Tinkercad. Finally, to make it a little easier to hold this spinner, I'm gonna glue these caps into place that I made really quickly in Fusion 360. I'm using glue because even if you do make it a tight fit, things loosen up over time. So glue really is the best way to hold this thing together. All right, there we go. Another really cool fidget spinner. And this one was pretty simple to make. On to number three. Here we are in Fusion 360. Another very cool free software that is super powerful and it allowed me to make this pretty cool design where the bearings are actually going to be embedded inside of my 3D print. I did film myself making this in Fusion 360 but it was a bit of a chaotic process where I had to go back pretty often and change settings and do a lot of tweaks so it would be really hard to follow. So instead I'm just going to roll the timeline back on this completed design and then run through each step so that you can have an idea of what it took to make this thing. So first of all, I started out with this ring design, almost exactly the same as the one I made in Tinkercad, except this one I gave a little bit more tolerance on the inside of the ring since I do have to drop the bearings in place while it's printing and I wanna make sure that there's enough tolerance that it slides right in without any problems. After that, I extruded a sketch of the actual bearing itself just to have something to reference and build around as I'm making the rest of this spinner. Then I extruded another copy of that ring on the outside and this is gonna be one of my three arms. I'm just gonna create this one arm first and then later on I'll pattern the whole thing around the center bearing. Here I created these little lips that are gonna hold on to the edge of that bearing and that's what's gonna help me embed it into place. And I'll do the same thing on the top as well and then I created the actual arm connecting the two bearings. If I go into the sketch here, you can see how I made this by first projecting the shape of these two circles so that I can reference those. Then I created these two outer arcs that are tangent to both circles so that it's a nice smooth transition. And I offset those three millimeters inwards so that I have some thickness to create the arms themselves. So as you can see, I extruded those arms and then I combined them to that outer shape. After that, I cut this circle open like so. And the reason I did that is so I have this 10 millimeter band that goes across the top and bottom of the bearings. I figured this was a better way to embed the bearings because if I was gonna have this round lip, the printer would have a hard time printing on top of the bearing itself. But by creating this bridge that goes straight across the bearing, the printer can actually just shoot the gap and create a nice solid shape. You'll see what I'm talking about once this thing is actually printing. All right, here I just did a little tweak, straightening this out for aesthetic purposes. And then I started cutting away at the center as well. So I created another band here. And as you can see, it kind of holds onto that one corner of this center bearing. But when I pattern that around three times, the bearing is now completely held in place. And this pattern feature is super cool because I can actually just go in here and change the quantity to whatever number I want. 
So I can really easily modify this into a fidget spinner with five arms or even just two arms, which each have their own interesting looks, but that three arm design seems to work really well for fidget spinners, so I'm gonna stay with three arms. Next up, I created this outer cap for holding the fidget spinner. And if I do a cross section here, you can kind of see how this works. There's this little dome so that it can hold some glue when I stick the two things together. And then there's a very tight fit into the bearings themselves. And a bit of a larger gap here on these top surfaces since the bearings themselves can wobble a little bit. So I wanna make sure there's at least like half a millimeter of clearance here. Okay, from there on, I just went ahead and started adding my chamfers and fillets like I like to do at the end. And I also threw that little triangle on top there, which is gonna help with the grip. And yeah, just finishing off with those little chamfers and fillets that'll help things look nicer and come off the build plate easier as well. All right, that's it. And of course I can right click the bodies here and save them as STLs. And you'll notice I didn't model two of these caps because it's gonna be symmetrical. So I can just save this one out and print it twice for both ends of the spinner. So here it is printing out in Protopasta's stainless steel PLA plastic, which is nice and heavy, plus I'm printing it out completely solid. So that should help with the spin. I'm printing this on the EV160 printer, and you can see here that it shows me the Z height. I know that at 9.5 millimeters, it starts that bridging. So I'm gonna pause it one layer beforehand so that I can drop in my bearings. Once I've got all those in place, I just hit resume and the printer will continue printing, totally unaware of what I just did. But since I was smart with my design, the printer's not gonna collide with the bearings and it's just gonna go ahead and print right over the surface of them. You can see here how it starts with the outline, bridging straight over that bearing. And then from there, it'll go ahead and fill in the rest of the layer. You can see that first layer on top of the bearing isn't the most beautiful, but as the print continues, it kind of fixes itself and leads to this really beautiful end result. I printed my end caps on the same printer, and then I went ahead and tested them on the spinner, made sure that everything worked nice and smoothly, and since it seems to work really well, I'll go ahead and glue those into place, just as I did with my Tinkercad spinner. There it is, another very cool spinner, this one with embedded bearings. Since I gave these bearings a generous tolerance, the outer bearings actually still spin a bit. And that's a nice little bonus, a little something extra to fidget with. All right, nice, three down, one more to go. I'm gonna make this final spinner in SolidWorks. And unlike the others, it's not gonna have bearings on the outside because this is a special spinner. It's gonna be wind powered as inspired by my Galactops. Still, I'm gonna start out exactly the same way as I did with all the others creating this ring to hold the center bearing. I'll extrude that up seven millimeters again. And there we go, we've got that same tube shape that is the basis of all my spinners. But from there, instead of creating one of three arms, I'm gonna create this giant 100 millimeter circle around the entire thing. Then I'll use the three point arc to create this little concave divot on the side here. I'll trim away that unwanted section, and then I'll go around and add some constraints making sure this is lined up with the center. And I'll also give this a radius and a width dimension so that it's fully defined. I can select that and select the circular sketch pattern and copy that three times around to create my final contour. A nice big surface for my wind power to work, but something to grab on when you wanna spin it with your fingers. I'll offset that three millimeters just to match that inner edge and I'll extrude it seven millimeters as well. So now we just have to create the fan blades that will go in between these two shapes. First of all, I'm just gonna select this loop here and convert that into a sketch as well as this outer ring and I'll extrude that into a solid block, making sure not to merge it. We're gonna use that later, but I'll hide it for now. Then I'll do one more sketch on that top plane and to start off, I'm gonna create a single thin rectangle. I'll dimension that to be just 1.2 millimeters wide and the height doesn't really matter. I just wanna make sure that it completely covers this design. So I'll select that and I'll do a linear sketch pattern here, spacing that out about four millimeters and then copying it until it covers the entire surface. 
Now I can hit OK. And lastly, I will create a rectangle on the top here and trim away these lines. That way, all of this becomes a single contour, which will just make it a little easier to work with in the next steps. I'm going to extrude this 7 millimeters, just like everything else. And here is where the magic happens. I'm going to select this, go to Insert Features, and use the Flex tool to twist this entire shape around the origin. And by doing that, it's going to twist all these slots at an angle so that they spin when I blow on it. You can see me checking the angles here. I want to make sure that the overhang isn't too dramatic. About 45 degrees, so that's good. And then I'll just go ahead and confirm it. This flex tool can mess up sometimes, but you can achieve the same effect by doing a twisted sweep. Still, this flex tool is a nice little shortcut, so I'll do it when it works. Now that we have the blades, I'm going to bring back this solid shape that I made earlier. And then I'm going to use the combine tool and select common. And that'll make it so only the parts where those two shapes intersect remain. I'll do one more combine and select everything, turning it all into one single shape. Of course, I gotta do some final fillets. And then, that's it, we've got our spinner. Here it is printed out, and as you can see, it's got those two colors, which I achieved by pausing the print twice and swapping out filaments partway through. This stuck pretty well, so I had to go ahead and smooth that tape out for the next use. But, there we go. Our fourth spinner, and a very unique one at that. This was actually inspired by a pinwheel that I'm designing but it just happened to work perfectly as a spinner as well, so I guess this is just kind of a sneak preview of one of my future videos. That twisting technique can work for all kinds of different shapes. So here you can see another version I did using a spiral instead of straight lines. But they both have the same really cool moire effect where it kind of shimmers when you tilt it. And I just love how that looks. All right guys, there you have it. Four different ways to make four different fidget spinners. I hope this was a super informative video to you. I personally learned a few things myself. If you've got a 3D printer and you're still fiending to fidget, make sure to visit my mini factory where you can download all the models for free. Well, except for my 3D pen version, of course. That you're gonna have to make yourself. It's a tough call, but I think this stainless steel vortex spinner is my favorite. I'm just really happy with how those embedded bearings came out and the weight of this print is awesome. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite and let me know if I've made enough fidget spinners. I don't think I'll be doing another fidget video because the trend will probably be dead by the time I have time. But then again, views talk, you know, if this gets a million views, shoot, I'll make a fidget spinner video every day of the week. But for now, I'm going to move on to other projects. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see what I end up coming up with moving forward. Until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>